I'm Lee Coulter, and as part of our ongoing educational series, I'm going to talk a little bit today about glasses. I get asked a lot if glasses are important. And of course, like with any simple question, there are really two answers. One is yes, and the other one is no. So let's talk a second about the question, because the question really is, when are glasses important? If you're just starting out in life, and you're learning to tell the difference between wine and water, something that's not a styrofoam glass or styrofoam cup that doesn't have a hole in it is going to suit you just fine. This is a standard issue banquet wine glass. They probably cost a dollar and a quarter a piece. It has a stem. It's clear. It's got a nice little tulip shape to it. This is all you really need. This is going to give you an opportunity to appreciate what color the wine is so you can tell whether you have a white wine or a red wine that you're tasting. It'll give you a little bit of information about the bouquet and the aromas. It'll keep your hands off of the cup of the glass so that you're not warming it excessively. And it's a great place to start. It doesn't break the bank. The other time when glasses are really not important is if you are, say, at a wedding reception for 300. They're serving wine, a red and a white wine, sort of as a light cocktail. The point there, of course, is to celebrate the new couple, to relax and have fun and share stories and enjoy the afternoon or the evening. You're not there to evaluate the wine. The glass is not important. They can even serve it to you in one of those clear plastic little things. If this makes you uncomfortable, of course, just you know, order something else and get over it. It's not about the wine in that occasion, so you're not concerned about it. If, however, you're somebody that has been drinking wine for a while and you've decided that you really haven't been paying attention and you want to learn to appreciate the wine that you've been spending money on a little bit more, or you're just ready to take your wine knowledge and your wine appreciation to the next level, then it's time to take a look at glasses. So I have brought today just a, a, an assortment of the glasses that we use where I work. We use these every day. This is crystal, this is um, food service crystal, so it's expensive, but not ferociously expensive, and it's designed to be roughly handled. Um, it's designed to go through a, an industrial strength washing machine, so it's, it's, it's lovely, and it's very nicely balanced, but it's not fragile, so you don't have to be too uh, fastidious around it. This, of course, is a white wine glass, and this is the red wine glass. Now, as you look at all of these glasses, you can see there's three parts, the bowl, the stem, and the foot. It's exactly the same as your standard issue banquet glass. The difference between this glass and this glass, this is a standard pour of about six inches. This glass is, this is a standard pour of a wine, red wine, and what they want you to be able to do, of course, is the swirl. If you put more wine in this, you're not going to be able to do that. We, of course, know that we swirl for two reasons. One, so we can appreciate just how incredibly beautiful the color of the wine is, and also to open up the aromas so that when you hang your nose over the edge of that glass, all of those amazing fragrances and all of those amazing memories associated with all of those fragrances are available to your senses. Okay? The shape of the glass, of course, directs those aromas, concentrates those aromas handily enough right around your nose. And that's what we want, whether it's a red wine or a white wine. White wines are a little more fragile. They don't need as much exposure to the air, so consequently the bowl of the glass is not as open as in a red wine glass. You can probably see the difference, I think. but yet it still has that nice tulip shape concentrating the aromas so that when you put it, put it up to your lips and hang it up, hang your nose right over the edge of that glass, you're getting all of those delicious aromas. So the question back to, the, back to when, are, when are glasses are important. Glasses are only important if you're trying to evaluate the wine or you're really trying to enjoy the wine that you already know you want. So if you're at a tasting, the appropriate glass is important. If you are at a dinner with friends, other people who enjoy wine, and you're going to talk about the wine, and you're going to pick it apart, and you're going to really analyze it, and 
talk about the structure and the tannins and you're really going to get into some appreciation of that wine and the glass is important if you are relaxing on the deck at the end of a hard afternoon at work and you've been just looking forward to that delicious glass all afternoon you're going to take the time you know it's april you're going to really just savor the color the aroma the flavor it's just going to all come together right there for you you don't want to use the glass the styrofoam cup is <laughs> okay you don't you're not evaluating the wine if you're on a date you know, don't be adult. Nobody does that. You know, you just want to enjoy, you enjoy, you, you're there. To enjoy. So I can see the question on your face. You're asking me about, what about all of those red wine glasses? There's a burgundy glass, and there's a bar glass, and there's a this glass, and there's a that glass. Let's not split hairs. But I want to show you the difference between a balloon type of glass, which is like this, and the standard, more tulip-shaped glass, you can see that this one is more open. This is typically used for those big, incredibly tannic red wines. Obviously, what we're trying to do, and the same reason why the bowl is so wide here, is that you're trying to expose as much wine as possible to the air. It's the oxygenation that'll help soften those tannins and helps the wine relax a little bit. So as you swirl, more of that surface area of the wine is exposed to oxygen and it softens and, and makes for a more pleasant drinking experience. That's why. Now, I know that, that you're asking me about the Pinot Noir and all of that sort of thing. Um, serious Burgundy hobbyists use this all the time. They don't split hairs over this. Um, most, of that, most of that stuff is just marketing. And if you have you know, if you have in your budget the extra money for those specialty glasses, by all means use them. But if this far, <laughs> the distinction to be made is between this and this. <laughs> and everybody can have one of these for $2 plus. Before I finish our comments, my comments today to you about the importance of wine glasses, let's take a look at the champagne flute. This is the conventional glass, preferred glass for champagne now. You remember in years past, we used to drink champagne in those big, wide, shallow, open glasses? Well, they discovered that <laughs> that, <laughs> that takes away a lot of the appreciation for the wine. One, you don't get to watch all of those bubbles and all of that wonderful, you know, effervescence in the, in the wine, just going back and forth. You don't get to watch that churning. That's kind of fun. Plus, in that big, wide glass, all of those bubbles dissipate very quickly. So the, we've switched to this glass to mitigate that and to concentrate all of that effervescence and all of that carbonation so that when it's right under your nose, it sparkles. It just sparkles. It's part of the enjoyment of that type of wine. Um, and I can't remember what else it was I was going to say. So choose your fa favorite spring wine. Right now we're enjoying some fine wines from Spain. On the deck, a little Sauvignon Blanc. Salut!